DJ C Major with the flavor. So we gave away two free tickets today, so make sure you get on and register. 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely like that. You know, we can be motivated, we can be inspired, we can listen to all the great motivational speakers, but when it's all said and done, we gotta get out there and do the work. Mm -hmm. um, we also like to give a shout out to Madison Community Center. That's what we're recording at right here today at 20642 Madison Avenue here in Madison, Illinois. So we appreciate them for giving us this facility as well to rent out. So we, we thank God for that there. And like she said, without a vision, the people perish. And I wanna give a shout out to my wife too. Um, <laughs> She, she, don't know. She, she don't like to get credit um, to herself. Um, a lot of events, um, she worked tirelessly at night, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, working on this event. I'll be asleep. She'll be running around the house like a little mice. <laughs> and she'll come in the room and talk to me like I've been up all night. <laughs> so I got to deal with that. Yeah. And then a lot of stuff in the community, like the Tuskegee Airman game that, that just went down in Richmond Park, she was a big part of that there. And she don't like to take um, credit for things that she do, but she did a great job with that. She implemented everything. She did a lot of the right now and stuff like that as well. So give a praise for all the praise. Oh, wow. <laughs>
I'll come up the way through it and so on and so on and so on. But something happened, I ended up having a daughter. And I didn't want my daughter to go through it, I went through it. So I had to figure it out. I was saying to myself, you know what? There's no ball and chain holding me here. There's nothing holding me here. My sisters have, they have good husbands. I, I was like, how come I can't die? How come I cannot have, you know, this, this great man in my life? Why do I keep picking the same type of man? You know, so it was a mental pull. So what I did was, God put it on my heart. Because when you're in an abusive relationship, you guys, I don't know if you know anybody who has, you are an introvert. You stay yourself a lot. You don't really have a lot of friends or socialize. Let me grab some water real quick. Excuse me. But you don't have a, a lot of friends um, and things like that. So what you tend to do is you tend to stay to yourself. But what happened was one day my mom said, I was praying a lot, and I was crying. It, it, you know, it, I, I would sit in the living room at my mom's house, and my daughter was there, and I was crying. Because I was like, God, why is my life turning out like this? I was 24 years old, 25, and um, I was at home, and one day for Christmas, we had a grab bag at work. They asked me what I wanted. I said, I want the CD Mary J. Blige my life. Then my mom said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want a CD player. And um, excuse me. And then all of a sudden, Mary J. Blige, my life, Lauren Hill, they became my best friends. Because the songs and what they were saying, that was my life. If you looked into my life and seen what you see, people look on the outside, but what they don't see is the invisible scars, you know, that I had and that what I was going through. But those ladies, they changed my life. So what I did was, I would listen to them, and I would go in the bathroom, because I, I was in the midst of my abusive relationship. Don't get me wrong, I fought back. So it wasn't like he was just doing this to me. Yeah, I had to fight. Who wants to come home to that? And then my daughter seeing this as well. But then you go into work smiling, got black eyes, whatever. Come on, that was, that was crazy. So I would pray, and I would look into my life to see, to be real with myself. Then the next minute you know, uh, the next day I'll light a candle, say a prayer. Then before you know it, the energy that I was giving to that negative relationship, I started putting it to myself. And then before you know it, the negative relationship disappeared and it went away. He left because I wasn't feeding it. And guess what? I manifested my life in the way I wanted it to be. So. Once I got out of the abusive relationship, because that, that disappeared, I was giving no more energy, I said, God put it on my heart and said, you gotta tell everybody how to do this because it's a lot of women who are going through this. You know, I'm standing up here alone, you guys, but what you don't see is the tens and thousands of women standing behind me who have died because a man had to tell them to be one twice. And God says, I walk in the beauty supply store because people used to go, no, I love your hair, your clothes, where did you get it from? I'm like, I came from the beauty supply store. Girl, it's $10, $20. They just couldn't believe it. So I went to one, and it was a lot of women. And God said, you open up one of these. That's how you're going to bring your women in. I said, I don't got no money. He said, I'm going to show you. So next thing that you know, you guys, I opened up a beauty supply store just like the Koreans and the Arabs in Hillside, Illinois. And I was very successful. I had a lot of women coming in, buying hair, makeup, spending six hundred back to a thousand dollars on lace wig, and I was making plenty of money. But they would come in to tell me all of these stories about their relationships. They want to lose weight. I want to. Uh, uh, how come I can't be writing books, start a business? And I was like, well, I can't help these people. I don't know. I don't even tell them my story. So. By my, my, I shut down my shop because I had moved away to Florida, and I said the next one I open up, I'm going to be a certified life coach so I can help these ladies. Because what happens is they would come in one way, and and they would still leave feeling unpretty inside. And I said, no, this is crazy. I got to be able to help them. So I got certified, and that's how Mental Beauty was born. And Mental Beauty is a beauty company that beautifies women and young girls on the inside as well as on the outside with motivational, inspirational products and services. And we also turn your visions into reality by helping you get into the beauty business. Whether it's a brick, or brick and mortar, or whether you, we have vending machines where you can start. It's a lot of young girls out here. We dominate. The beauty industry is a 
a $60 billion industry. African Americans dominated at least 70% of it. And we don't have no parts of it. So I show young girls and women how to, how to get into it. But at the same time, we infect our subconscious. So when you walk in one way, you see all these subliminal messages in my shop. I already have a vision of how I wanted it to look. So my shop is very beautiful, chandeliers, beautiful wigs. They come in one way, but then they leave another. You know, they're, they're changed. So mental beauty was born. So what I wanted to do, you guys, was, like I said, everybody wants to write a book. Everybody wants to lose weight. Everybody wants to start that business until it's time to do what real bees do. Number one, you got to get a target. Half the time, the reason why we are not able to finish something, whether it's writing a book, starting a business, losing weight, is because we are not focused. Us, as women, we are all over the place. So one minute we want to write a book, next minute we want to start a business, next minute we want to lose weight, but then you start getting off track. You gotta write it down, you gotta get focused. This might take a minute, an hour, it might take days, it might take months. But what you need to do is get a target so the way you can, you will know exactly what you're shooting for. So you want to write a book, okay, great. So now we got a target. Step two, you gotta write it down. You gotta manifest it, you gotta look at it every day. Put it on the wall. You gotta breathe life into it. You have to want this more than you want to breathe. This was not easy to sit down and get focused and to write a book. But I had to manifest it. I had to have a mind movie and actually see myself at a book signing, signing books, writing books, people purchasing my products and my services. I had to manifest my dreams. That's step number two, write it down to give it life. Everything's created twice, this bottle of water. Once it was somebody's thought, the next minute you know it was in the physical. So anything we want is out here. The universe already says so, God says so. But we have to get on that same frequency and will it to us by, by, by breathing it, smelling it, feeling it, acting as if it is already happening. Step three, you gotta look into your life and make sure that your life's blueprint matches up what you're trying to accomplish. Meaning, if I'm trying to write a book, and then again, I'm over here, I got two or three jobs. How am I going to do that? That's not going to match up for what I'm trying to accomplish. So you got to look into your life and be real with yourself. Two things are going to happen. Either you're going to change your purpose or you're going to raise your standards. Okay? And that brings me to the next step. If you change your purpose, at least you know why you're not writing your book, why you're not losing that weight, why you're not starting that business. Okay? But at least you know. And you can put it on the back burner and you won't be, because that's, that's annoying. When God gives you an assignment and you're snagging you and you're like, I want to do it, but I can't. But now you know why. Because your life does not match up with what you're trying to do. So maybe you've got to do that later on. But guess what I decided to do? I decided to raise my standards. Meaning that if my mom never only got a high school diploma and I want to become a doctor, that means I got to go to college. I got to raise my standards. I got to put it on 10. I gotta work twice as hard to get what I want. Because, hey, being smart ain't nothing but memory. But being intelligent, anybody can be a doctor or lawyer. But being intelligent means you comprehend, you understand, you raise your standards. I'm changing my life. Writing a book, every, if, if it was so easy, everybody would be doing it. But it's not. And that's why you gotta want this more than you want to breathe. You understand? If you're really serious about this, Raise your standards, put it on 10. A lot of time to do what you need to do, which brings me to the next step. The only thing that separates you and any successful person like Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, is they manage the 24 hours in their day wisely. We all have 24 hours in our day, okay? But we work eight, we gotta go to work, it takes two hours, an hour there, hour back. We gotta get some sleep. We've got to put ourselves on a schedule. Every hour should count. My phone goes off every hour. You know what? It just reminds me, i got to do something. So I got it two hours out to write my book each day. Didn't bother me. I was like, whoa, this is easy. Yeah, I uh, gave my work, my lunch time, okay, this is my time. I'm going to write this book. And uh, I did. And guess what? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. And before you knew it, I wrote this book, okay? 
The next step, number six, you gotta either, you gotta disrupt your routine and your rituals. Meaning whatever you were doing ain't working. That means you need to surround yourself with like-minded people, places, and things. If you want to be an author, you're at the right place. If you, you know, you want to meet that great guy, go to where great guys hang out at events. You know, if you want to lose weight, hey, go to a health club. Hang around like-minded people, places, and things. Disrupt your routine and your rituals. You can learn from other people. We're only as smart as the, the five people that we hang around with. Who are the five friends? And you know what? Ain't no diss to your friends, but you got, you're trying to write a book. You know? <laughs> And if it was so easy, everybody would do it. So we gotta do something drastic. You can't go to the mall when you try to write your book. You gotta say, no, I can't drink tonight. I'm writing my book. And lastly, you guys, you gotta trust the process. A lot of times we give up on ourselves before we even start. If we just hang in there, that's why 30 days is so important. Those 30 days will turn into 60 days. Those 60 days will turn into 90 days, and before you know it, like me, I was there with you, I own a business, a brick and mortar. I'm 48, I was in an abusive relationship, I was a high school dropout, got my GED, got a scholarship, went to college, been working for the city of Chicago for 13 years as an IT consultant, okay? I have my own business, I'm an author. I don't want to be one, I am one. And this is not my only book, I have a couple of books. Because once you do one, it's easier to do the next. And you follow these steps, which this is my life. I don't talk about it. I live it. Mental Beauty 730, seven steps in 30 days that will change your life and your business. you got to trust the process. We give up on ourselves before we even start. So you want to write a book. We're going to turn that I want to write a book into I'm an author. I wrote a book. I'm a business owner. I lost all that weight. I look good. I got that degree. I, I'm, I'm getting married. You know, you gotta act as if it is already happening to you. Because anything we want is out here in the universe. We just gotta speak it into existence. We gotta see it. We gotta live it. We gotta breathe it. Again, so you wanna write a book. Write it down, get a target, get focused. Write it down. Number two, get breathe life into it. Number three, look into your life and make sure your standards and your purpose match up. Number four, raise them. If they don't, or change your purpose, at least you know. Number five, manage the 24 hours of your day wisely. Number six, disrupt your routine and your rituals. Number seven, trust the process. And you'll change, I want to write a book to I wrote a book. I'm an author. I'm a business owner. Good luck. It ain't easy. I was there, I was you. But guess what? I'm 48. I own a business. I lost weight. I got a great man in my life. I wrote a book. My name is Lil Brown. I, I, I own Mental Beauty. I'm a visionary. And I, I'm a speaker. I spoke all over. But guess what? I'm a mom, and I'm an IT consultant, and I was abused. But guess what? I'm an author. So I, I just like to give back, and I just had to write this book, $9.99. Plus, you get a complimentary consultation in my shop for 30 minutes, so we can actually get it. And the great thing about this book is, you guys, it's an easy read. It ain't thick. The words are big. It's very simple. And guess what? I even put pages in the back. It's a workbook. So that way you can actually write your goals down, how much you want to make. So you can see this. You know, your life, managing your life, identifying problems, you know, remedies, defining standards, you know, refining. And then also, just a couple of inspirational quotes from me. But thank you guys so much. Make sure you stop at my shop, Middle Beauty Supply. We're in Harvey First Black Home Beauty Supply. We're just like Sally's. We're just like the Korean Beauty Supply stores. We're located at 15341 Center in Harvey. We're seven days a week. And I would love 
to talk to you guys. So thank you so much for your time and energy, and God bless you. And next time we meet, I want to see that. I'll come see you. Thank you guys. Um, back in January, her husband Lamont Brown kicked yeah. off our show for the year. He did work because he had a political thing that they did. Yeah. yeah, he loved politics yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he kicked off, uh, kicked off our show back in January um, this, of this year. You can also see it on um, YouTube. We got it on YouTube as well. Um, I appreciate, once again, my, my wife for her hard work. Um, unfortunately, um, this past Wednesday, uh, my wife and her grandmother's here, her auntie's here, and her sister's back there lost their. Um, nephew, uh, 10 years old with cancer. So we keep them in our prayers. I appreciate Ashley coming out. She works with me. Um, she, Ms. Um, Dr. Best talked on discrimination. And housing, we know for sure, um, deals with a lot of discrimination. We're part of the Joliet um, Large Relocation Project down in Fairview um, Projects right now where they're relocating um, 167 families to tear down the projects that, because they have become inhabitable. And a lot of our tenants on a daily basis are um, going through discrimination, um, as those, you know, she was just talking about. Uh, remember that black folks, we have to preserve our legacies as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're so caught up in social media and things that really don't matter, whether our legacies are being um, decimated, they're getting rid of it. We don't even know our history. So remember that, that you know, remember that. We thank God for Peaches coming out as well. Um, she lost her father about three weeks ago. Oh, so we appreciate her for um, coming out as well. And as we get ready to close out today, um, as always, we thank God for his unmerited, undeserved favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of my wife, Contemporary Living, and our panels of authors, be blessed. DJ C Major with the flavor.